the neighbors threatened to ask my mother to move once when I was, <laughs> I was living out west. I mean, uh, they said I was driving them crazy with the horn. I used to put in at oh least eleven to fifteen hours a day. Yeah, that's that's what I wondered. That's, well, that's insane. True. Yes, I did that for over a period of three or four years. Mm. Yo, what up, YouTube? Today, I'm gonna be reacting to some more some more jazz videos I found. This one, which is Charlie Parker discussing music with Paul Desmond, two godlike alto players. Um, it's kind of funny, it was uploaded by Bob Reynolds, who's an amazing saxophone player. I don't know why he uploaded it, or where he found it, but that's pretty cool, Bob. Anyways. music, because, uh, this many good people playing in that record, but the style of the alto is uh, so different from anything else that's on the record or that went before. Did you realize at that time what effect you were going to have on, on jazz? And you're going to change the uh, entire scene in the next 10 years? That's a, <laughs> that's a pretty deep question right there, Paul. Did you realize you were just going to change the world with your music? Well, let's put it like this. No, I had no idea that it was that much different. Nope. <laughs> well, I'd like to stick in a question, if I may. I'd like to know why... Um... Wait, wait, who is this? John McLellan? How, how dare he interrupt my heroes like that? An American lawyer and politician? A member of the Democratic... A senator of Arkansas? Is that who this is? Really? Is this actually the same dude? All right. For sure, for sure. There was this uh, violent change, really. After all, up until this time, uh, the way to play the alto sax was the way that Johnny Hodges and Benny Carter played alto. And this seems to be an entirely different conception, not just of how to play that particular horn, but music in general. Yeah, how to play any horn. True. I, that, I don't think there's any answer to this is the way you speaking, John. Yeah, that, that's what I said when I first started talking. That's my first conception, man. That's the way I thought it should go. And I still do. I mean, of course, it could stand much improvement. Damn. It's so it's so awesome. I feel like he's just so humble. And, like, he's just honest with, like, yeah, man, I'm just playing the music the way I think it should be. And it's not that much deeper than that. <laughs> I mean, of course, it could stand much improvement. Most likely in another 25, maybe 50 years, some youngster will come along and take the style and really do something with it, you know? Mm -hmm. But... I mean, ever since I've ever heard music, I thought it should be very clean, very precise, as clean as possible anyway, you know? And uh, more or less to the people, you know, something they could understand, something that was beautiful, you know? Mm -hmm. As you can see, I'm, I'm guessing Bob Reynolds, the person who uploaded this, is the one who, like, highlighted these things, but it's definitely important to highlight because you can hear this in Charlie Parker's playing. Even though he's extremely virtuosic and plays these extremely quick things, he is very intelligible, or... Is that the right word? I don't know. You can really hear what he's doing. It's not a bunch of gobbledygook. And it really connected with a lot of people at the time. Music is basically melody, harmony, and rhythm. But I mean, people can do much more with music than that. It can be very descriptive in all kinds of ways, you know? All walks of life. Mm. Don't you agree, Paul? Yeah, and you always do have a story to tell. It's the... Uh... One of the most impressive things about everything I've ever heard of yours. Wow. Well, that's more or less the object. That's where I thought it should be. Uh -huh. Another. Wow. And something about hearing, like, Paul Desmond, who's amazing in his own right, just gush over Charlie Parker being great is, like, so wholesome. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. And yeah, I think this right here, having a story to tell, is at the end of the day, I think a lot of musicians really want that. They want to be able to have something that they can really express and have a story that they share with the audience or whoever's listening. And it's really hard to convincingly tell a story through music. It's really simple too, though, I guess. It's the hardest thing and the simplest thing. Another thing that, that's uh, uh, <clears throat> been a a major factor in, in your playing is this fantastic technique that nobody's quite equal to. I always wondered about that too, whether there was, uh, whether that came behind practicing. Uh, I hope whether so. Whether that was just from, from playing, whether it evolved gradually. Well, um, you make it so hard for me to answer, you know, because uh, I can't see where there's anything fantastic about it at all. I put quite a bit of study into the horn, that's true. In fact, the neighbors threatened to ask my mother to move once when I was, when I was living out west. I mean, uh, they said I was driving them crazy with the horn. I used to put in at oh least my 11, God. 11 to 15 hours a day. Yeah, that's, that's what I wondered. That's, well, that's insane. True. Yes, I did that for over 
over a period of three or four years. Oh. Holy shit. Okay, wait. So he said 11 to 15 hours. Let's just say 13 hours a day. Maybe he missed a couple days because of Christmas or something. Let's say he played 360 days a year for three to four years. That's that's already he's already just in three years he's he's gotten past that ten thousand hours mark that everyone talks about. He's he's already well past that. At this point he's been playing for way more than just three years, so he's probably like Yeah, somewhere somewhere around there, I'm sure. You know, I don't think oh, because Charlie Parker practiced this much, it means everybody should practice this much. Because he had a goal that for him reaching it required practicing that much. He already had if we go back in the video, he had this, you know, he had his vision for what he thought music should be. He probably was a little obsessed. He was like, this is the thing I care about most, so I'm gonna spend 11 to 15 hours a day to get there. And it's clear that he succeeded. But I, I don't want people to just see that and be like, okay, now I gotta practice 11 to 15 hours a day for three years if I wanna be a good musician, because you might miss the point of what does it mean to be a good musician for you? You know, what what is your goal? What are you trying to do? If you're trying to be able to improvise in jazz and be able to speak through your instrument, you might need to do something similar to that. Somehow I, I got the idea that you were just sort of born with that technique and you never had to worry too much about it about keeping it working. You know, I'm very glad that he's bringing out this point because I think a lot of young musicians tend to think that... Yeah, they do. They just go out... necessary to do this. Go out and make those sessions and live the life, but they don't put in that 11 hours a day with mm. uh, any of the books. Oh, definitely. Study is absolutely necessary in all forms. It's just like any talent that's born within somebody. It's just like a good pair of shoes when you put a shine on it, you know? Uh. Like... Uh, Schooling brings out the polish, you know, of any talent that happens anywhere in the world. I feel like this video is a really good example of the whole talent versus hard work debate. I feel like a lot of people are kind of hard onto one side or the other, like, talent isn't real and everyone who's done amazing things is just, they worked for it. They have the same 24 hours in a day. Um, and then there's the other side, which is, of course, like, talent is everything. You're either born with it or you're not. And I think this is a good example of the intersection of the two. No one can disagree that Charlie Parker is extremely talented, but to get anywhere with his music, he needed to put the time in. Sure, he has that innate talent, but it means nothing without the work and the study. So I think that's a really good takeaway from this. But yeah, if you liked the video, please comment like, subscribe, all of it really helps a lot. I'll be making a lot more videos more consistently now that I have a room for all this. And uh, yeah, see you guys soon.